Hey, hey. Sometimes I get video requests. Sometimes I have to look for shit myself. And sometimes a video turns up in my recommended feed, courtesy of YouTube itself. Thank you, YouTube, for making my job so much easier. And, and for making my job. Every time I see, like, an American stand-up, they're always like, I went over to England, and English people are so polite, they do this, why you... They do what, Jim? When you... Oh, hang on. I hope your opinion of Britain hasn't been sullied by a few salty experiences, Jim. But, see, I've been to Australia and America, and that's never happened to me. Probably because my idea of comedy doesn't consist of going to a foreign country and calling everyone racist. <laughs> that's just me. You people are the politest people in the world. He, he's, he's talking about Americans now. That, that's who he's calling the politest people in the world. It might be a coincidence that he's in America talking to Americans. Oh yeah, maybe he's just picked up a few pointers from Donald Trump, eh? We're the greatest, we're the most politest, most best behaved people on the planet. It's tremendous, so oh, yeah, maybe not, eh, Jim? Right, I'm getting people <laughs> every day telling me to have a nice day, and I'm such a moody bastard, I'm looking at him going, well, I'll see about that. <laughs> don't you tell me, don't you tell me what I should do with my day, you pompous American. Good joke. Broken premise. That's not what random people say to you on the street, is it, Jim? It's what customer service operatives tell you when you've just given them your custom. Have a nice day, sir. It, it's not out of politeness. They've been ordered to say that for the sake of the business. I mean, if, if you go to North Korea, will you report that, Oh, everyone's so smiley over there. Is this smiling all the time? Is everyone singing and dancing in large groups? It's the happiest place on earth! But, uh, and uh, to be honest, my response in that situation would be don't tell me what to think and how to act, you pompous North Koreans. See what I mean? The conclusion of your joke is sound, despite the sarcasm, but the premise is completely backwards. I know you're a comedian. I know you're telling jokes, but I'm here to tell you why your jokes make no sense. So, I don't want to hear any of this, why are you making a serious response to a comedian bullshit, like I hear from the Buckley fanboys all the time. If being funny means you can get away with saying anything, then I can say whatever the fuck I like because I'm funnier than you. Sorry, what? No, I'm not. Well, shit, that's me told. Isn't this a worthwhile and perfectly objective discussion? <laughs> right? But the Brits are the rudest! Like, if you people think they're all polite and tit-bit tally-ho and walking around with bowler hats and, like, saying, excuse me, and that type of stuff, I can't say exactly what they say, but go to a football match and have your son's head kicked in in front of you because he, was, you know, because he didn't know what the offside rule meant, right? I, British people say please and thank you, but the crowd at an American football game will kick the shit out of you. So this proves, it proves nothing, does it, Jim? It's a shit joke, you see. A shit joke that only makes sense if you're being deliberately assholeish to one country and deliberately ass-kissing to the other. But go ahead, Jim, and tell us how everyone is racist except you. Like, they're proper <laughs> rude people. And proper it, and rude people, proper, yeah. Proper rude, and like, no one tips or anything like that. No one tips. No one tips. You lying sack of sweaty minge grease, Jim Jeffries. In Britain, everyone tips because in most British restaurants there is a mandatory service charge of 15%. We don't have a choice, Jim, because we have to leave a tip or they will prosecute us for not tipping them. Do you understand? Because, Jim, the same thing happens in Australia. Or did that slip your fucking mind? The difference is, in America, you have the option of not tipping. Is there any subsection of the American population that doesn't tip, despite having the option? She says black people don't tip. Are you nuts? Niggas don't tip. Everyone knows that. Have you ever waited tables before? No. Then shut up, asshole. 
Louis, mate! Now would be a good time to speak up! Jim Jeffries is claiming it's rude not to tip. <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> no, you're gonna you're gonna let him keep talking. Are you all righty then? They their beer is flat. Do I know why their beer is flat? Why? Right, like it comes through the taps flatter because they're cheap bastards. Right, they want the beer to the top. They don't want any head on oh, it whatsoever. Because right. if there's a little bit of head on it, that means they're losing like three yeah. percent of the volume. <laughs> yeah, no oxygen. The reason we have the option of flat, warm beer in Britain is because our country is, get this, older than the refrigerator. Did I just blow your minds, you entitled, pampered colonial scum? For the thousands of years in which we've been drinking beer, the most advanced emergent cooling technology we <laughs> is consisted of keeping things in an underground cave. So we're accustomed to drinking our sorrow-drowning juice without going, wow, my beer is two degrees short of the exact temperature I need it to be before I can bear it. Yeah, and we can lie down on six mattresses and a pee without getting a ruptured vagina full of sand, you bunch of goddamn snowflakes. They don't like, yeah. they don't like uh, ice because, that, once again, you don't get as Water much drink. Yep. We do like ice. We do have ice, Jim. We just don't put it in beer. What the even fuck, please? Thing and because their teeth are so rotten, they're sensitive that they can't even drink <laughs> it. Sensitive teeth. They really nice do. warm liquid. I very rarely say this, but citation needed. Let's look at Fig One, shall we? What you're looking at here is the World Health Organization's DMFT index for each country. In the green countries, the average 12-year-old has fewer than 1.2 decayed, missing, or filled teeth. In the blue countries, they have between 1.2 and 2.6. In case you still haven't registered what's going on in this image, let's look at it a bit more in depth. A bit more recent as well, and a bit more sort of country by country. Bring up Fig 2. As you can see, the average Ugandan has less than one affected tooth, an average of 0 0.7. Well done, Uganda. Keep up the good work. Ukraine, you've you've still got some work to do. 2.8 is your average. Although, to be fair, radiation probably makes your teeth fall out, and that's not your fault. United Arab Emirates, 1.8. Can do better. It's a fairly rich country, so you have scant excuse. Use that oil money for some national health, why not? Now let's scroll down. Aww. Oh, look here! Our very own United Kingdom, 0.6. Barely half of a tooth in the average British head is decayed, missing, or filled. That is fucking interesting, is it not? I mean, I was half expecting to see at least uh, maybe a 1.19 from a country stereotype to have bad teeth. I wonder what else we'll find out. How embarrassing. Hey, just for good measure, let's have a look at Australia. <laughs> Eat it, Australia, and eat it, America. And when you're finished eating it, how about you brush your fucking teeth? They're a horrible mongrel yeah. breed. They, <laughs> they stink as a nation. They do. According to the ascertainable statistics, you people have considerably shittier oral hygiene than we do. So where are you getting your shit, please? Is it just a stereotype you got from an Austin Powers movie and a joke in The Simpsons? The facts clearly say otherwise, but you're gonna stick with the hateful stereotypical lie just because you feel like it. Is that right? All right, Jim. Carry on telling us how everyone else is totally racist, you fucking shining beacon of virtue. They, there's, they, they have, they, they've, well, they used to hate the black people in the 70s, right? And they had some very racist sitcoms. Did we? You mean like till death do us part? Isn't that where all in the family came from? I think. No, that was uh, till death, death do us part. Till death, till death do us part. How fucking embarrassing, Jim! <laughs> we made a racist sitcom, and the Americans went, "Hey, what a great racist sitcom! Can we buy it from you?" <laughs> because we fucking love racist sitcoms here in America. Yeah. Well, yeah. The thing is, Man about the house is Three's Company. Oh, right. okay, okay. Yeah. 
Like, do these Americans realise that, by extension, Jim Jeffries is saying they must be even more racist than the British because they import it from us? I'll, I'll help you out, Jim. I'll, I'll save you from your own foot-eating bollock-headedness. The butt of the joke in these sitcoms is who? Who is everyone laughing at when they watch these sitcoms? Are they laughing at the foreign brown people for being foreign and brown? Or are the foreign brown people the sympathetic characters and the butt of the joke is always, and by design, the racist white people? Yeah. All, a man about all that day house. in this sitcom, he would call him Sambo, Nig Nog, all these type of... Wow. Jungle yeah. Bunny was another... Right? Like, and he goes... <gasps> He's laughing, Jim. Why is he laughing at, at these racist slurs you're saying? What is he, some kind of racist? Sorry, what? He's not laughing at other races. He's laughing at racism because racism is the joke. Gee, Jim, what the fuck might have you done wrong there? You fuck off. No, you fuck off. So for those of you still going, shut up, why are you arguing with a comedian? Can't you take a joke? Jim fucking Jeffries can't take a joke. He can't take the premise of a fucking sitcom. When people make regular programming featuring joke after joke mocking racist white people by impersonating them, in other words, when people make anti-racist comedy, Jim Jeffries looks at it and thinks it is racist. Love Thy Neighbor and Till Death Do Us Part were extended exercises in taking the piss out of white racists. They were doing, Jim, exactly what you are doing in this clip. Laughing at white racists. Except in your case, you get to do it, and in everyone else's case, they don't. Because when you do it, it's anti-racism, and everyone else does it, it's racism. You are a stupid, skull-fucked shithead, Jim Jeffries. What in the nappy-headed bullfuck has happened to you? This is not comedy. This is territorial, chest-beating, hypocritical virtue signaling. You think you are better than everyone else, when in reality, you are somewhere between just as bad and much, much worse than everyone else. I want to show you something, Jim. These are Nazis. They were racists. They invaded Europe and they gassed the Jews and you know, all the other untermenches and so on and so forth. This is Count Dankula. The least cute thing that I could think of, which is a Nazi. He mocked Nazis by explicitly calling them the, and I quote, least cute thing you can think of. And he was arrested and sent to court for hate speech because he mocked Nazis. Now, I'd be lying if I said I, I, ex I, I expected this from the police, but if I expect it from anyone, it's the police in the event of a nation becoming a totalitarian farce. But the last people in the world from whom I expect this is comedians. But you, Jim Jeffries, celebrity comedian, just pulled the same shit as the Scottish police. You are morally outraged by anti-racism because you don't understand comedy when other people are doing it. Well, I'm, okay, oh just, just for the record, there's no racism in England. Oh, yeah, not yeah, even at all. I, I, yeah, I just want there to be, yeah. be quite soon. There's, there's none anywhere in the world, none. I'm sure there is. There are useless, talentless, wart-brained Australian dick noggins like Jim Jeffries who go to other countries and call everyone bigots. Even though those countries gave them a home and a life and a successful career. There are disgusting racist parasites all over the world and you are one of them, Jim Jeffries. Lu Louis C.K. is another one. He came from Mexico and decided Americans are racist. Good job, Louis. So if anyone thinks I'm racist, please note, I have no problem with black or brown people. I just don't like ungrateful immigrants like Jim Jeffries and Louis C.K., who deliberately shit on the hands that feed them and accuse them of the very bigotry they themselves wear on their fucking sleeve. If everyone is racist, why don't you fuck off back to Australia and you fuck off back to Mexico, you pasty white cracker honky planks? What's that? You like it there? You like it in racist countries? Fucking funny that, isn't it? But the words that black people can say about white people are, are they can't hurt no. because... Because why, Louis? Because white people are psychologically indestructible? <laughs> Colored people are poor, wilting children who can't take it hearing a word because it hurts? Is that right, Louis? Good thing you're not a racist. 
Fucking wow! Like if they call, if you, what, the words that, that, that people call black people bring them back to all the terrible things that have ever happened to them. What terrible things? Food stamps? You are, you are part Hungarian, Louis. Your, your paternal grandfather was a Hungarian Jew. Now that, that doesn't make you a Jew. Because the Jewish religion is carried on the matrilineal genes, so, <laughs> so we'll stick with Hungarian for now. What if I called you a Janissary? Does that hurt? Because it takes you back to being a slave in the Ottoman Empire. No? Is that because it was over a century ago and it didn't happen to you? Right! Well, kindly don't impose patronizing, stultifying victim mentality on other races when you are not willing to impose it on yourself, you fucking racist. That's why they uh -huh. hurt so much. But you call me a cracker, and I'm, it brings me back. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, uh, I owned a lot of land and people. No, you didn't, Louis. You didn't own slaves. Nobody alive in America has ever been a slave. It's not the past. It is the present. Stop fucking lying. And, where, uh, where does the word cracker yeah. come from? Where does it that come from? It means it's something that you call somebody. It means crack of the whip. <laughs> oh, fucking God, no, it doesn't. You stupid, oblivious pissant. It's from the Gaelic word crack. C R A I C, meaning joke or good time. Cracker is a pejorative word for Irish, wait for it, slaves. Louis, Irish slaves. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about Irish slaves, right? They were the wrong color, so bollocks to them. Again, I'm so fucking relieved that you're not a racist, Louis. So it's like, oh. it doesn't really make a, it's not like you're taking a person down and like, ah, cracker. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, that's... Uh, a white suit, some lemonade. Where is Hong Kong? Uh, a mint from? julep. A <laughs> mint <laughs> julep. It, you called me a nigger? <laughs> well, that just means I'm an African king. What? I'm, I'm this gold-clad hereditary dictator who sells poor people to other countries? Ho ho ho, thanks very much! How the fuck have you got away with this for so long? What about honky? Is honky a... what is that one? I don't know how honky... It's just a dumb word. Some honky. people say it's because of the I, way that I, white Americans talk. Uh, oh, kind of nasally honk 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 honk. Yeah. Just, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, like, I don't know how it makes sense. sense. I don't think there's one white person that has been offended by that word. You're right, actually. There's nothing racist about voices. I'm glad this came up because this is some shit people still can't get their heads around. Nobody gets their voice or their language or their accent from their race. If an African child, a European child and an Asian child all grow up in America surrounded by nothing but American accents, they will all develop exactly the same American accent. Because accents, languages, and inflections are 100% cultural, 0% genetic. It's undeniably obvious when you bother to think about it. This is going to blow the minds of even the most level-headed level anti-SJWs among us. But when I do this, ching chong wong ah, ting ping wong wah, I am not being racist. It refers to a language and accent spoken by white people, black people, brown people, and Asian people within the geographical area known as China. It's, it is culturally insensitive, but it is in no way racist. If you think it is, it's because you like calling people racist when they categorically are not, and you like calling people racist because you see race as an issue when race is not an issue. And that is called being racist. Own your shit, please, and get out of my face. No, my, my point is, they used never. to in the 70s, they yeah. used to have a problem with black people. No, we didn't. We had a problem with racists, of which there were vanishingly few, thanks to the anti-racist comedy we've been committed to producing since time immemorial, you stupid cunt. We were almost bombed into the dark ages by massive raci racists. We have learned our lessons, unlike you bastards. By that I mean the rich, arrogant cunts in America and Australia. Not Americans and Australians in general. You, you In general, you guys are cool. Don't let these out-of-touch toffs call you racist. But then in the 80s, it, it yeah. became they had problems with the Indians and the Pakistanis mm -hmm. was the big problem that they had, and they united about that. We have never had a problem with Indians. Most Indians are Hindus. Do you see where I'm going with this?
And then it was like uh, after September the 11th, they had problems with Arab people. Okay, you really don't see where I'm going with this. You're a fucking moron, Jeffries. If the attackers were committing these serial mass murders while chanting Arabia Hu Akbar, then we would have a problem with Arabs. Who or what do we have a problem with? And now, it's since the EU has opened up, they hate the Polish people. What? Because the Polish people will do a kitchen for you for half the price. Actually, Jim, at this point, we rather admire the Polish. A lot of us are thinking the Polish have the right idea about a few things. Because in Poland, they aren't getting routinely murdered in the street by certain people. Which people, Jim? <laughs> Jim, I'm very happy for you that, that you now spend a lot of time in the United States where you have very little to fear from Muslims, unless you happen to be LGBT. But for you to sit there shitting on the very president who is trying to keep you safe from Muslims, and you are shitting on the British people who are getting routinely murdered by Muslims, shows a level of obnoxious dickheadedness that I would not expect from a spoiled two-year-old. If you have a problem with racists, then how about the people who are invading other continents and shitting all over the hospitality being offered to them? Oh wait, you sympathize with those people, don't you? Because they're doing what you do. And also murdering. You're a cunt, Jeffries. I'd say go back to Australia, but I'd be surprised if they want you back. Fuck off to a deserted island in the South Pacific where those dirty, wrong-skinned racists will never bother you. Wanker. And oh, the British really? are the laziest workers in the world. <laughs> then everything's overcharged. I had some renovations done in my house. Of course I got Polish people in. I wouldn't make an English person make me anything. They couldn't build anything. They're drinking like 10 cups of tea a day, the lazy freak. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I know you're just trolling. I get the joke. Well done. You're saying the opposite of the truth. It's very, you know, very, very good. You're welcome, folks. You're welcome for the modern metropolitan paradises in which you live. Thanks to the fact that you were colonized by the British rather than the Spanish or the Dutch or heaven forbid the French. Or hey, the Polish. <laughs> They're just great at statecraft, aren't they? Not really. I'm, I'm, I'm flattered by your gratitude. And, and well done for burying it deep inside this crafty, subversive edginess of yours. This is, this is a new level of upside-down comedy, where absolutely everything you say is the starkly fucked-out opposite of the truth. Bravo. But, Jim, yeah, and Louis, because you're doing it too, is there any chance that some of your audience won't get the joke, and instead they'll get the genuine message that you really do think British people are lazy and racist? And that you would never be so racist as to say the things you're saying and genuinely mean them. Because, I've got to say, you've made it very convincing indeed. For a moment there, I was sure you really were being absurd fucking fap nozzles who get laughs by lying relentlessly about everything. I'm amazed that you have such huge audiences, given how nuanced your sarcasm is. I'm... Never mind. Reality doesn't matter, does it? What's actually racist and actually not racist doesn't matter, does it? Only getting laughs from the fuckheads in Upside Down lat mat 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 power to you. You've earned every bit of your success. I'm, I'm done. And by that, I mean this is why I'm done with the comedy scene. Because this is how you become successful in the comedy scene. By flipping reality upside down and having people believe every word you say and then claiming it's just a joke, it's just a prank, bro! When you get called out on your bullshit. I, good luck. I hope you could sleep at night without eye-bleeding night terrors brought on by the cocaine withdrawal and the writhing fever dreams of bloated cancerous vaginas you wish you could crawl inside and die. You both used to be funny, and now you're just whores to the dominant ideology, you sad, weak cunts. Enjoy your 30, 30 pieces of silver, why don't you? Thank you very much for having me, Australia. This is my last night here. This is a beautiful country, and the most beautiful thing about it is its people. The least beautiful thing about it is its media. Exactly the same thing could be said for America, yeah, and Britain, wherein I will see you very soon. VidCon begins in a couple of days. I will be there with my badges, and we will have a great time with the beautiful American people. 
and we will laugh and point at the glimmering shit stains in your establishment media. Watch all of the spaces. Goodbye. And fuck the right-coloured people. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be racist!